breast milk science. It's a thing, and it's our thing. We're Byheart. We're an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S.-made formula to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We make our formula in our own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania, using a small batch manufacturing process that works to preserve the integrity of our ingredients. We ran the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in 25 years and clinically proved benefits like easier digestion, less gas, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. We were the first infant formula company to earn the Clean Label Project Purity Award. And while we've put a lot into Byheart, there's a long list of things you won't see on our ingredient list, like no corn syrup, no maltodextrin, no GMO ingredients, no soy, no palm oil. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. I need new music. This is the JJO Discover New Music Podcast. Look alive, look alive. Joining me after a little bit of coaching to make sure I say his name right, Jaffe from Oxymorons. Jaffe, how you doing, man? You, I'm doing good, man. Just uh, been home from a week for a week after this uh, Europe tour with Corey Taylor. So just adjusting to the New York groove, which is very <laughs> different from the European groove. <laughs> I, I would assume so. I would assume so. Well, let's start off with that because we're going to talk about the debut album, uh, Melanin Punk. But uh, oh, yeah. how was that overseas? Uh, that's that's a pretty big deal out with Corey Taylor getting the band out there. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, um, we're for for a band of our our size and where we're currently at on our journey, it, it's uh, pretty incredible that we got to go to Europe twice in a matter of eight months. And wow. we went with Bad Omens earlier this year, and now with Corey Taylor, each time it feels like we had you know the red carpet rolled out for us. Um, <laughs> And just got to, you know, feel feel the impact of especially a band like us and, and from New York and the States, you know, over there. We like we like call the Jimi Hendrix effect, you know. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um you get you get big over there and everyone in America is like, no, they're ours. We like them first. <laughs> and then it creates this nice little like jealousy that just results in success. So right, um, right. it's been really cool to to just feel that. Yeah, and the love over there was just immense. Uh none of none of us have ever been to that side of the world let it, for vacation or anything. So to also experience it in that way, which is like, I think for us as people in our lives, which is super important, such a beautiful experience, you know. I love it. Well, congratulations, yeah. guys. And it just keeps building from there. And that's actually kind of what leads me into this. A group of guys, like you said, on your way up, out there, pounding the pavement, show after show, that musical grind that so many up-and-comers go through and a lot of people don't survive. How does it yeah. feel now having the labels on it, the CDs out, the downloads ready with this debut album, Melanin Punk? How does how does that feel now at this point? You know, it, um, it's great. To, it just feels, you know, like we're let, we're crossing into a new level um, and a new like stratosphere of it. But it also isn't the end goal. Um, we're very much still working and blazing a path. And we're, we're really happy to have the, the support and the resources uh, such as from label and management and other festivals that we didn't have previously, you know, it, mo it keeps us motivated and let us know that the thing is working and it's on its way towards success as other bigger things attach themselves to it. Uh, but the work ain't done and we ain't even halfway there yet. <laughs> I guess it's the New Yorker and it's, you know, it's just always right. about the grind. We're never taking a moment to smell the flowers. We're just like, let's go, let's go, let's go. You son of a bitches, man. You never sleep. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, well, it's super exciting. And and honestly, everyone is uh, in for a treat if you have not been exposed to oxymorons and, and, and their sound. And I will say, if I'm being completely honest, getting my first real exposure, diving into it before uh, doing this interview, doing my prep and everything, and listening to the music, watching the music videos, and I'm not saying this just to pander because you're on here. I really do mean this. Instantly in love with the sound. It dug it immediately and such a you. unique uh, 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 gr uh, grab inspirations from different elements, rap, rock, country. I mean, there's so many things that you guys brought in, which 
from where you're at and where you guys are from there in that New York area, that is a melting pot. But I do want to ask, why does rap and rock, and after listening to your music, why is it so copacetic? Why does it blend so well? And you guys finding that sound, finding that blending together and making that sound for oxymorons. Um, well, I think those those two genres specifically have, have such a like rebellious nature to them. And they sort of broke the mold of what popular music was when they first came out. And then had like a chokehold on it for so long. I'd say rock, rock and roll, especially from, you know, like 50s, 60s throughout 2000 and then hip hop, the way it's sort of become the, you know, the one of the biggest genres of the 21st century now. So I guess the the, and the impact they've had on culture um, is really important. And then I think just the ethos and where they come from. Um, again, it was, you know, like the devil's music for rock and roll and the... Uh, <laughs> You know, like like gangster music and, right, and right. violent music for uh, for for rap, um, and really that's just about just nonconformity and the general population of those times, like not fully understanding that there is a new movement happening. Right. Um, so those two things have always been relative to us, and also on a, on a much more than just uh, what new metal got us in a much more like literal sense, or to use an example of those two things coming together to sort of form this new moment in music we always felt though that there wasn't enough of a discovery and and like an addition of the rap culture Mm -hmm. um into rock as opposed to just like the literal i'm rapping over some metal (laughs) right we are rap rock but (laughs) those stories being the stories that nwa told you know that even kendrick lamar tells in this day and age uh so many more rappers even cypress hills uh, during right. the 90s, you know, there wasn't that representation and that authenticity to the culture and sound of rap in rock in an effort to mix it with rock and punk and everything else. And we always like that was always our goal to achieve, to just like take it. We feel again, just to use new metal as a glass ceiling and it's not a knock on its success. And it obviously um, has influenced us and we fucking love it. We thought we always thought it was a glass ceiling and it right. could be taken way further. And especially uh, now in this generation of music consumer, the younger generations too, they are listening to a lot more of everything right? and enjoying a lot more of everything. So, you know, I think there was an interview uh, Andre 3000 recently had talking about his flute album. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but uh, yes, he yes. said, yeah, <laughs> we don't have to get into that, but we, um, he said, you know, it, uh, obviously just saying like, it, it takes more than talent and like, and timing and who you're speaking to is so important. Um, and I think the timing for us in this mission that we're on in, in terms of, of music and the culture of music to change it is like, this is it. This is the moment happening. And that's why it feels like it's working. Uh, well, I love it. And like I said, just listening to it and just all these different sounds and, and hearing the influences in there. Uh, that was such a beautiful explanation. And it kind of leads into my next thing. Do you find yourself maybe when you're writing, let's say that day, we'll just, I'll pull from your examples. Let's say you're uh, driving over to uh, a bandmate's house and you're listening to NWA and then you write songs. Do you notice maybe what you're listening to, if it's on the rap or the rock or the new metal side, pulling in maybe for writing that day or, or, or what you're going like now we yeah. have a song that's a little bit more rap leaning or the other way around, you listen to Hendrix or something on the other day. And, and I wonder how that works for you. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't like make this idea popular. I know Rick Rubin talks about it a lot, but we're, we very much believe in serving the song. There's mm-hmm. very little like ego in our creative process. So like, just cause I play guitar doesn't mean I'm coming up with all the guitar parts. Mm-hmm. Just cause Maddie plays drums. Sometimes I have, you know, drum beats and, and D and other people will sing different ideas or have concepts. And we just sort of write all together. And also just because the two brothers are are the lyricists doesn't mean that every time one gets one verse and one gets a second verse. Right. It really is what serves the song best and what makes the best the song as best as possible. So we try and remove as much ego. But to what you were saying, like to use an example, like Head for the Hills on our album is a song that I remember K.I. came over to my place and he was just like, yo, what if we did like like a harder rock Igor era Tyler, the creator? You know, so I was just like, oh, that means like you sort of let's start with like a dirty sub synth, you know, line. And then I can, you know, but like take some of like the notes or progressions from something more metal leaning and then throw like a kitchen sink beat on there that has a kind of a Jay Dilla thing that sort of, you know, the timing is a little off and it creates a little discomfort. And then uh, throw some rock guitars on it, and we got Head for the Hills. You know, so there you go. (laughs) It could start from such a simple little idea that, yes, it's like, 
oh, like title of the creator or it comes comes from the rock side. You know, there's even sometimes from like a Foo Fighters super hard rock chorus right. that we might even make fun of sometimes. But like, what <laughs> if we did it? What if we did it in a in our own way, right? How how could we make it? We even like to, I, I we love listening to music that we, people wouldn't expect us to, or sometimes I necessarily, I don't even enjoy subjectively. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are such great, moments in songs like even four seconds of a song that are just like mind-blowing or genius or like will will just inspire you in some way and you take those four seconds and be like i'm gonna steal this and (laughs) throw it into our formula and you have something like unexpectedly new and cool Um, so yeah we're always finding different ways to create and it can come from anywhere and anyone listen rate share subscribe Discover new music now at WJJO.com, in the JJO app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Brock has a new interview every Thursday evening between 6 and 7. Nutty for one JJO. I need new music. This is the JJO Discover New Music Podcast. Look alive, look alive, look alive, yeah. Uh, well, it, it's so cool seeing that creative process, and we're going to hear more again because it's out now. Melanin Punk from Oxymoron's uh, debut album. And you guys actually had uh, some help from uh, Zach Jones producing this one, and he's worked yeah. with guys like Fever 333, uh, Pop Evil. We came as the list goes on and on. Why was uh, that such an important relationship uh, to have him there for the sound you were looking for on that final product with Zach? Yeah, I mean, we so we met him through working with Jason uh, Alan Butler of Fever 333. Um, they worked on our EP Mohawks and Do Rags together. And um, we knew we could hold down the hip hop side, especially very well, like in, in production. But whether I mean, speaking to his skills or not, he just like understood. Um, and he was someone that we got in the studio with. We've worked with a lot of producers in the past and it was just chemistry and it just worked. And it like it was just a no brainer. We knew it was fast. You know, songs like Justice, uh, Look Alive, Enemy. Those are all songs that we wrote from scratch with Zach in a matter of three, four hours and they were done. Wow. And that speaks for itself. And that kind of relationship, especially like between band, artist and producer it is to be honored, you know, especially if you're doing this with with honor. Um, yeah. And the reasons why we're here and we're pursuing this is is beyond just ourselves. We So he just felt like a really important part of the equation and it was time to make the album. We knew he was going to elevate the demos we had already and ideas we had. And we were also going to be able to write some really cool stuff from scratch with them. And it was, it's just, it was effortless. And that's something yeah. we didn't even think twice about it or even once. <laughs> that's what we're doing. <laughs> do it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Just, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. He's an, he's incredible. So talented. Obviously uh, his resume speaks for himself, for himself, but yeah, he's a I, great, great person. We love working with him. I'm just so excited for people to hear more of this and be exposed to this now that's out now, the debut album. And again, you mentioned your EP Mohawks and do rags, which was out in 2021 uh, when the world was all crazy. So uh, you guys yeah. getting out there now with this debut album is, is really exciting. Uh, so I'm going to get a little actor studio, James Liptony on you with this question, but I okay. like asking, especially for guys that, you know, are on their first or second album and, and on that, that way up and, and really growing and expanding and finding themselves so here we are 30 years later, a, a handful of Grammys, uh, you know, a, a bunch of platinum records uh, with uh, uh, oxymorons. How will you guys 30 years from now with all that success, look back on this album, Melanin Punk? What, what's your what's your mindset? How are you going to reminisce on? This? Um, I think Melanin Punk is uh, the first time we were able to for us. The goal is to is to be as a band and especially with this album to create a blueprint for future bands that look like us, that want to sound like us, that aren't as represented in these spaces and not just for the cultural reasons, but like the way, you know, we dress as well. And we take a lot of, uh, and the way we present ourselves aesthetically takes a lot from both those worlds. We, we don't, we pride ourselves in, in what we call, uh, we do not code switch. Um, and there is a lot of code switching from black and Brown people in, in rock spaces because it's it's a way it's a way to be safe it's a way to feel safe right. um, and it, it could it, a lot of times it's who you are and that's a beautiful thing but 
the main thing is to celebrate and be who you are at all times. And whether a scene or not supports that, you know, lead with love and be proud of it. And so we think we're a blueprint that the future of bands will can take even further. But a lot of people are in agreement that there hasn't been a band that's doing what we're doing, not just in sound, and, but in aesthetic, culturally, and like with them and the mission that we're specifically on to take on the responsibility of representing uh, a lot of people that are often not represented. I mean, we see it at our own shows and shows that we're a part of. Um, and that light just go off and younger kids, especially younger kids of color that are just like, oh, I can do this now. I just saw it happen and I can do it. And so, yes, the success of the band is obviously important. We all want to make a lot of money and, and win accolades and continue to have success uh, with albums and tours. But that part is equally, if, actually, if not more, important to us um and if we can change the landscape of music and culture by being ourselves and challenging all the conformists then i think that legacy is is going to be everything to us and much more important to leave behind than anything any other reason why people start bands you know for right. attention and to be loved <laughs> I uh, I love that answer. That was a beautiful answer, and I Thanks, think that's man. perfect. the The blueprint for future uh, generations and 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 musicians. Uh, a great answer. Awesome answer, man. I love it. Well, uh, if people have not gotten excited yet, I don't know what else I need to do for you. Go get it. Melton <laughs> Punk from Oxymorons. It's out now. And uh, Jaffe, thank you so much for the time. We are uh, honored to have you here, and we're excited to see more from you. But. We're not done yet. Hold on one sec, because Let's go. Now, that, now that the important stuff is out of the way, I've done my due diligence. Let's have a little fun and then we'll get you to it. So this is rapid okay. fire. There's no wrong wow. answers. All right. No wrong answers. You just go with your butt and we're going to learn a little bit more about you. Let's start easy. Let's start easy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mash, mashed potatoes or baked potatoes? Mash. Okay. Uh, disco or techno? Disco. A little surprised. I thought maybe you'd be more of a techno guy. All right. See, we got surprises now. I like house. I like house. But oh, okay. I'm like, eh, <laughs> Otherwise, get the bell bottoms out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> jeans or damp socks. Oh, man. I have a crazy damp sock story. So uh, we I'm have the time. No tell jeans. me. Tell me. Can no, you tell me? No. I can't tell you. It is, it is not radio friendly, my friend. It is not radio friendly. We'll we'll have to save it for the next one. We'll get or maybe off we'll, record. Off the you know, off the record. We'll have it off the record. Oh my god! All right, good. Well, I'm super excited now about that. Uh, would you rather see Bigfoot or the Loch Ness monster? Um, Loch Ness monster, because I can't run away from Bigfoot. You can't run away from Bigfoot. He'll chase me. He'll get me down. Loch Ness monster. I can observe it and be like, wow, look at that wonder of the world, that myth, beautiful. Way over and on with my day. On with my day. You saw him from a safe distance and everyone's fine. Everyone's fine. Uh, I do need to tell that whenever someone picks Loch Ness Monster, I do like to share with people that scientists do believe that it was just a whale penis. That is what. <laughs> I read that. I read that you read actually that? Okay. very recently, too. Yeah. Yes, I, like, I've heard of this. When it breaches the water, you can see it's just a big floppy whale penis. That's all it is. <laughs> I, look at that. Look at look at how a penis can turn into such mythology over a of time. That'll never happen with my penis, I'll tell you that much, Javi. Never. <laughs> never a thing of mythology. Uh -huh. Nope. But uh last one for you here. One punch from Mike Tyson or a hundred punches from the Where's the Beef Lady. <laughs> one punch from Mike Tyson because we were working with Mark Orell, who's played uh, with the folks and a few other people uh, on the EP. And we were talking about how this song felt like a punch in the face from Mike Tyson. And what an honor that would be, even if it knocked you the heck out. Like a punch from Mike Tyson in the face, I'd be honored to take that one. Uh, Interesting. I don't know if I'll survive it, but or if, I'll, if it won't give me brain damage. But man, what an honor it would be to have a punch in the face from that guy. If I'm going to take a punch from anybody, just... Let it be him. I'm not. Now, again, this isn't about whether I survive it or not. <laughs> honor. The honor is That's in Mike you. Tyson. Here lies Jaffe, who died from a punch from Mike Tyson. I mean, you can't With feel honor. bad about that. You can't feel bad about that. Uh, thank you for humoring me. More importantly, thank you for chatting. New music, oxymorons, melanin punk. It's out now. We really appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for the love. Appreciate you, Rock. Listen, rate, share, subscribe. Discover new music now at WJJO.com in the JJO app.
or wherever you get your podcasts. Rock has a new interview every Thursday evening between 6 and 7. 941 JJO.